Um, so CASE, uh, the Center for Academic and Career Engagement, is made up of a few different areas of that academic support, and one is um, academic advisement. Uh, there's academic support, uh, career services, and disability services. So um, the first part of that academic advisement is uh, we support the main uh, advisors on campus, which are the faculty advisors. So for each student that comes to Wagner, um, in you know, can come as a transfer student or come as a incoming first time freshman, we'll get a faculty advisor who is that's my daughter. Uh, <laughs> um, my daughter will eventually come to Wagner too. But, uh, uh, and I'll make her sit through one of these presentations. But um, so the faculty advisement on campus is is a really big part of what Wagner does because it gives you individual access to a certain faculty member who's within the major that you're looking for or at least a professor in your first semester so it's somebody that you have a lot of contact with and will be able to lead you through the different options and the different pathways i'll talk a little bit about uh the wagner plan and the idea of the curriculum at wagner in a little bit too um, basically you should know that um, you're going to get guidance and you're going to get help um, and a lot of it is dependent on the things that you're you're wanting or needing. Um, people are there for you and will reach out to you too, but we'd also like to hear what you want um, and that our relationship with you uh, depends a lot on how you reach out to us as well. So it, it hopefully is very empowering. That's the idea of what we do. Um, so the academic advisement part, you can come to our office if for some reason you can't get a hold of your faculty advisor, if you need something clarified um, in an, you know, in an office time on campus, we're there, you know, nine to five every day of the week. Um, as you can see, we're accessible other ways too, by phone, email, uh, WebEx like this, or other video means. Um, the other thing, oh, academic support. So academic support is the second part of my office. We deal with the tutoring services on campus and oversee both the writing center and uh, peer tutoring. So the writing center is not just for English, classes, but it's for all kinds of writing on campus, no matter if that's you know, an essay for an English class or a history class, um, or if it's a lab report, um, or if it's um, even a presentation that you're doing for any other kind of course. We'll look at the language that you're using, the format that you're using, give you some feedback on that too. We do in-person meetings and we do online meetings as well. And that's that goes for everything that I'm saying today too. Um, um, uh, for the peer tutoring idea is that it's more specialized in the subject area you're looking for. So um, we have uh, students at Wagner who have gone through the courses that are in high demand or usually thought of as more challenging. Uh, and then we give them jobs as peer tutors so that they are able to then mentor students who are in those classes currently. Um, they, those students know the faculty members and the way they work. They know the uh, content area in and out. Um, so in addition to the faculty help and office hours and things like that too, the peer tutors really help uh, get deeply into the subject matter. And as I say, there are a wide variety of subjects that we offer peer tutoring in. Um, and those things are available on campus as well as uh, virtually as well. Um, the uh, career services, and the academic advisement are similar in the fact that our career services model is based on the personal relationship with you as a student. What are you looking for? What are you looking for in your major? Are you even thinking about a major yet? What might that major be in the different pathways within that? Um, if you're thinking about an experience as an internship, either for credit or not for credit, during a summertime, during a semester, all of those things, uh, we have resources uh, about and we can help you in navigating those kinds of things. But again, like I say, we want a lot of information to come from you. If you say, I'm a biology major, I'm thinking about the medical field. There's a lot of room within the medical field uh, for different pathways and different ideas and different thoughts about what kind of experiences you want. And we want to set you up best and most clearly for the things that you're looking for. So our office in career services uh, does a lot of you know, back and forth discussions with you, trying to um, not only say proofread a resume, but also make that resume uh, 
look like you in the sense that um, what you're getting to know you as, we want somebody that you're sending that resume to to get that same sense, whether that's from the, you know, the education listings, your experiences and work uh, and internships and coursework or something like that too. Uh, but we want to bring all those things out of you besides, or say in addition to polishing up that resume to make it as professional uh, and as, you know, the year 2020 as possible. Um, and I say that because I guess, you know, formats and um, conventions of resumes change all the time. We want to make sure that, you know, everybody is paying attention to what's going on in the workplace now too. Um, Wagner is very big with experiential learning and internships uh, and that every student who goes to Wagner has experiential learning and internships throughout the course of uh, your time at Wagner. So that this is the thing that one, you can't avoid and probably don't want to avoid because this leads to professional opportunities after graduation. Um, and not only that, sometimes during your time at Wagner as well, you can get paid internships as well. Um, you'll learn more about career services, I think, in its own uh, admissions presentation like this too. So if you're interested in this at all, I can answer some of those questions, but at the same time, please look uh, for that particular uh, uh, presentation in the future too um, as a part of my office. Um, and then disability services is another part of what my office does too. And we support students that, you know, if you've had an IEP in high school, um, if you if you have been diagnosed with, you know, it's a learning disability, ADHD, if you have a short-term disability like a broken leg um, or something in that realm that you know you need accommodations in your courses for, uh, even if it's to, um, you know, extra time for, for exams or if you need, um, you know, your, your readings read to you by, um, by either a, a scribe or a reader, um, or if it's you need the location of your uh, classroom changed on campus because you cannot walk up four flights of stairs anymore. All of those things come out of my office too. So um, a lot of these things are gonna be asked on, you know, admissions uh, information when you, you know, apply and when you put your tuition deposit in like that too. But if you have any questions about that or how that works or what the usual accommodations are or what you need, um, please let me know that too. I'm happy to answer those kinds of things. Um, so to kind of go from what my office does and the resources that I provide and we provide, um, we're trying to make it, whether it's in person or virtually like this, a very welcoming place because obviously colleges can be difficult, can be nerve wracking, can be fear inducing, and, and maybe you're feeling some or all of those feelings right now too, but my office is dedicated to that welcoming atmosphere. Uh, and again, whether that's in person or like this, and to help you through these things. And that's what we dedicate our services to you. Um, on the curriculum idea that I was kind of mentioning before, we have, our curriculum is, is called the Wagner Plan. And it's based a lot on this idea of um, when you come to Wagner, the education that you're going to get is a Wagner education. It's not a generic one. Um, and it's something that marks you as a student who's gone through a particular experience or set of experiences so that when you go out into the professional world, even as internships as early as freshman year, um, alumni networks out there, professional um, people in the professional world know what a Wagner student is and has done and has experiences with already. So in the first semester, if you're a first time freshman, um, you have a, um, a learning community of three of your courses that go together. You're taking them all with the same students. They might all have different uh, specific uh, subjects to them, um, but they're all linked in some sort of thematic way. So for instance, one of those things is a business class that relates to uh, an art class that actually takes the form of like a marketing uh, art and creative creativity class and a writing class. Those uh, those three classes are taught by two different professors, but you're taking them with all the same students. With the idea being is that you get to make connections between these ideas through the professors, the professors back to you, and then you you kind of synthesize all those things in the in the writing class itself. Um, and you do three of these learning communities 
in different forms, but three of these learning communities over the course of your time at Wagner, once immediately upon entering as a freshman in the fall, um, the second one sometime between the spring of the freshman year and uh, the end of sophomore year, and then one in senior year. Um, they get progressively more focused on what your major is. They get progressively uh, more focused on the specifics of what you're required to do in them. So that by the way, by the time you get to that senior learning community, everything that you've done um, builds on itself. And that in the senior learning community, they're really getting you focused on progressing in the professional, uh, I guess, uh, environment of whatever it is that you're majoring in and whatever pathway you're interested in. Meaning an internship in that final semester, if sometimes it's a thesis in that final semester, as well as an internship, uh, but it's always um, a seminar with the students that you've been with, you know, in that major for the last four years, uh, looking at the different specific types of uh, actions that you should be taking to get to that, whatever that next level is for you, whether it's a full-time position or, or if it's graduate school or something like that too. Um, besides that, we have a curriculum that's based on the liberal arts model of giving you lots of choices um, and giving you lots of options um, and allowing you to choose a lot of those things to fulfill the requirements that we want you to do. Our um, general education curriculum is called the key skills and knowledge curriculum. And it's, it blends the ideas of, you know, you have to take this many humanities classes, you have to take this many math and science, but you have a lot of choices within that um, to make your schedule what you want it to be and to go toward the paths you want to go to and also giving you um, a lot of options to explore different things as well. Um, so hopefully it's the best of both worlds. Um, the other thing it does is that it it, um, it requires you, but it also gives you the framework for developing what we call the key skills. And the key skills are basically ideas, not just about what you should be learning about history, about math, about you know psychology or something like that, but the, the skills of developing your oral communication, developing your written communication, giving you more of an intercultural understanding, those kinds of things that then make the Wagner students stand out um, and, and give you that kind of understanding about the, you know, like a well-roundedness about an, what an education, what an educated person is. Um, so hopefully that kind of uh, explains in general the curriculum of Wagner to you. Um, I'll stop there or at least pause there for a second. So I don't know if there are any questions at the, at the moment or anything you'd like me to clarify. Thank you, Matt. So yes, we did have a few questions come in. You kind of hit on some of them, but I'll go through them. Uh, I just want to let everyone know now you can, the floor is open. So type away your questions and we'll get to each one as they come in. If there are any questions you have for the admission side, Skylar and I would be happy to answer them. Um, as far as academic goes, and then anything about the academics office will be Matt. So we do have one question that came in. Um, does the student have to pay for peer tutoring? No. Peer tutoring is included in the, the normal reasons why you're at WAG. I mean, tuition is, is goes toward part of that, I would imagine. But at the same time, if you're a Wagner student, you don't have to pay anything extra for peer tutoring and all the services that we offer. Thank you. And then we had another question, which you did hit on a little bit. Uh, do you allow extra time for certain projects, homework and tests for people who had IEPs in high school? Yes, it, it depends very much on what the, uh, what the diagnosis and the recommendation is from say the physician or medical professional that we, we get. So we require the documentation uh, for you to send us that, um, or for the medical professional to send us that. Um, but in a, in a large amount of cases, if you have had that extra time on your IEP in high school, uh, that can very likely continue in college as well. Just depends on that documentation. So if somebody's asking for documentation and um, or needing some sort of documentation in order to make sure that you get your accommodations, just make sure that you're able to turn that stuff in too. Thank you. And we have another question. Do you accept AP credits and dual enrollment high school college credits? 
Yes, we do. Um, and I'll let uh, Dana and Skylar can answer some of that too. Um, as I understand it, uh, AP credits that we accept uh, have to be a score of four or higher. Um, the, there's a list on our website of, you know, I took this AP exam, what does it come in as? Um, it can come in as a specific course equivalent uh, at Wagner, say like U.S. History comes in as the equivalent U.S. History course, History 103 or, you know, 104 or something like that. Um, there are also times when whatever the AP is, is not an exact match for something, but we do give elective credit uh, for those things too. Um, the other question was dual enrollment. So dual enrollment, as I understand it, is going to be more, um, I guess, clarified a little bit more in, in this fall. Sorry, Dana, were you going to say? No, I was just going to say that was the college credit that they're trying to have. Come yeah. in. So, um, well, stop me if I say something incorrect, but my understanding is that for dual enrollment credit, you can transfer totally, uh, or bring in, I should say, if you bring in a total of up to eight units. That's essentially eight classes worth of credit. Um, other schools do credits and, you know, classes are three credits. Wagner does a system that hopefully is a little clearer. One class equals one unit. You have to take 36 units to graduate, so that's 36 courses. Um, you can transfer up to or bring in up to eight units. They can be up to, I want to say, five from AP, four or five from AP. Sorry, go ahead. So five, they can, the students can bring in five college credits. So college for credits. yeah, a total, like you said, Matt, of eight altogether, five of them can only come from college. The rest can come from AP, or if you only have two college and then the rest AP, okay. but you can have up to eight, like you mentioned. Okay. Um, and then what we will do for the students is when they send in their college credits, yeah. which it is the responsibility of the student to send in their college transcripts to us, to the admissions office. So we need to have an official transcript from every school that you took a college class from. In order to consider it, um, it does have to be a B my a B or above in the class in order for it to count as far as the college class goes. As you mentioned, Matt, usually for the AP, it's it's a four or above mm -hmm. um, in order for it to count. But for the college credit, it needs to be a B or above in order for it to count. Um, and once you send us the transcripts, we'll put together a transfer credit report for you. We're going to consider all of the classes, even if you have more than five, we'll consider all of them. Um, but then at that point, it's it's what's going to fit best with your major and what will benefit you most, right? That's what kind of what we're, we're yeah, kind of doing yeah. that. Right, so if you have a lot of uh, dual enrollment credits or credits from previous college attendance or and it, it gets above that, we'll, we'll be in conversation with you about, you know, what's your pathway? What are you thinking about for a major? How are these credits gonna fit? Asked a lot of times if they're a, an elective of some sort, you'll want the specific course equivalent. So we'll, we'll just have a conversation about the best ways those credits can come in. Um, but yeah, I think as, as Dana says, and I would underline too, please have, make sure your official transcripts come to us and make sure that uh, Wagner is listed on your AP score report. So that all you know, the AP stuff can come to us automatically, um, but uh, the, the college transcripts are needed just so that everything is clear, everything's there, and then we can work with you on the best way to apply those credits. But we're happy to do that too. Um, Skylar, did I forget anything? Do you have anything to add as far as the credits goes? Um, just going back to if you do have a college transcript, you could always send it to your admissions counselor. Um, so you don't necessarily have to upload it to your application. Um, because most most of you and all of you have had your decisions already. So just to make it easier, you can definitely send that just to your counselor and we will then process it and let you know. 
Okay. And also, if you decide to attend Wagner, then at some point you'll have to fill out something called the new student form, uh, which on the new student form, it will actually ask if you've taken any AP credits and if you've taken any college level courses. You don't have to list every single college level course you took, but you we would ask, we do ask that you let us know if you've taken because so that we know to expect a transcript from you and we'll put it into our system. Um, we usually send out a reminder email to all accepted students that we're, if, if they want their credits to count, we ask that they send us their transcripts. Um, and that's a good indicator. If you fill it out on that form, then we know who to expect um, a college transcript from. So, Anything else to add to any of that? Me? No, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we actually have, okay, those were some private comments. Uh, we do have some other questions that came in. Skylar, are you seeing them? Yeah, so going back to the AP credits, Matt, um, students want to know how will this affect because students are now virtually taking the AP credits. Will that change anything? Uh, not that I know of. I think we would still hold to the standard of the four or better. Um, and that's from what I'm hearing from other schools and, uh, and the college board as well, just about the ability to take the exam, uh, the content that's being tested on the exam, as well as uh, ability to take it, I think is the biggest thing. And, and hopefully your score wouldn't change, if, even if the situation totally was changed. But. Okay. How active are Wagner alumni in securing internships slash job offers for students? They can be very active. In fact, it, it can depend on your major or your pathway. Um, there are honor societies within departments. Uh, one, for instance, within our business department, our school of business, that has um, what they call a select program that has um, a very active mentorship program for those students um, with people in the community who are alums. We have, um, but that's just one example and that could go department by department. But at the same time in my office, we deal with students in all majors or even students who are exploring and are undecided at the moment. And I would say that our alumni um, activity is very good and very involved. We have um, events, that are you know that are info sessions on a certain area marketing or fashion marketing or something like that um there's we have alums in broadcasting and journalism and um those people come in uh and you know either on campus or, or like this and they do presentations about what was their journey like how did they get from wagner to where they are um so we offer events like that all through uh, both the fall and spring semesters um, we also have um, a women's professional network that uh, has um, a couple times a month uh, what they call lunch and learns, where they'll have either um, people, alums from the business community will come, and not just business, business, but just like any kind of professional community, will come to campus to host a lunch and an info session, or um, my office will host students to go to that place of business. A lot of times that's in Manhattan. Uh, or Brooklyn and Staten Island and, and New Jersey. And I think that um, the kind of network that we have, these alums are very, very happy to talk with Wagner students, whether that's just in an email, whether that's just an inquiry um, at an event like this, or even more seriously about, you know, I, I'm really exploring this idea, what should I do? And um, our career services office in the case, in the case office at Wagner, um, wants to set you up with those kind of relationships too because we do have a very welcoming uh, alumni group our alumni office um, and the career office in case highlights um, the premier event of our year which is called career conversations which is um, a formal event takes place uh, has taken place in manhattan uh, in previous years where alumni from a variety of different areas um, and students from all levels and all majors come together for a type of networking event. It's, it's essentially 
to utilize the networking skills you may have developed in other events and other things that we've talked about, and at the same time, really make connections with these people to talk about an internship, talk about a future internship, um, or, or if you're at that level, I'm graduating soon, what's the likelihood of a job uh, in your field? All of those kinds of things our alumni are very, very good and very giving. I said before that um, our curriculum is set up and Wagner in general as a philosophy is set up. Um, the tagline, one of the taglines we have is that the practical liberal arts in New York City and the idea of that is that what you learn at Wagner, the idea should be that it has an application, that it has um, a place to go to, a place where you can use that knowledge. Our alums have already done those kinds of things. And they're really happy to pay it forward to say, Wagner did this thing for me and it gave me these skills. Um, I wanna help the next generation or the next um, group of graduates or, or current Wagner students get those kind of same kind of things, same kind of challenges, not just the same kind of giveaways, but the same kind of uh, networks that they have uh, participated in as well. So, I mean, I would that's a very long way of saying there's lots of different opportunities um, some of those uh, honor societies can be within the major, uh, but lots of these um, ideas, the Women's Professional Network, or even just any networking opportunity, business or career conversations, they're open to all. We're happy about that. Thank you. Okay. So we have a question, is math a requirement? You do have to take one math class at Wagner. Only one. <laughs> you could take more, of course. <laughs> the idea of that is that we, we want you to have formal quantitative thinking skills. That's the, the key skills part, um, knowing that it can be calculus. It doesn't have to be calculus. It can be statistics. It doesn't have to be statistics. Um, but it's something that is going to benefit you in your major or in your application to life in general. And that, that quantitative idea is something that's going to be present no matter what we're talking about. Tyler, you wanna? Um, if the coronavirus continues into the full semester, will classes be virtual? It really depends. And I think what we're all seeing is that the world changes day by day, sometimes multiple times within a day. So what we're doing at Wagner now is trying to prepare for as many different contingencies as we can. Uh, one of which is that, is what do we do um, if the situation is such that we cannot physically get back to campus? So what I'll, I'll answer that by saying that I think our experience in going to fully online classes within a week and having our offices provide fully online support and communication within a week has been probably a lot better of a transition than many people thought was possible. And maybe that's just because you had to do it <laughs> and you had to do it to survive. And, and that's what we what we tried to do. So I think the idea going forward is that we're going to try to um, prepare for as many different things as possible, knowing that we have the resources to be more nimble than we thought we were. Um, so um, one of those things recently is that, you know, a couple of weeks ago, oh, you know, maybe it's likely we could have summer classes on campus. Maybe it's likely we would, we would have to go to online classes uh, for summer um, because of the coronavirus. Well, it turns out that, yes, we have to go to all online classes for summer. Uh, just because of the situation we're in. So the idea is that I guess as, as the closer that we get um, to the fall semester, and I would say probably there's going to be some sort of clarity on what fall is going to look like probably by the end of May, um, just to give a kind of general time frame from what I've been hearing. Um, but you can be assured that lots of people at Wagner are contributing to different ideas about um, what we can do to make the Wagner experience the Wagner experience, no matter how it's delivered, um, and at the same time support you in that from, you know, even if it's from this. I mean, I have students that, you know, we set up a video meeting, they have a really quick question, and then the meeting is over. 
that's totally fine. It doesn't have to be a formal thing. We can just, you know, interact like people, like you were to drop in at my office or something like that. Um, so um, we're exploring all options and we're really just trying to figure out what the world's gonna give us sometimes, so. Can international students get internships the same as everyone else? Yes. There are certain amounts of, you know, sometimes work uh, restrictions uh, about paid positions, um, but for internships, it's 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 coursework, it's academic work, um, as well as it is a professional experience. And yes, international students still qualify for those. We're happy for those too. I, I would imagine. I mean, coming to school in New York City, uh, in Staten Island, you're gonna get a, the world is here, right? Um, so I think that the idea with uh, international students or domestic students all adding to the resources of what New York City is and does, um, I think is always welcome. So there's no legal restrictions to those things. Um, it's always welcome. We're happy to work with you too. Thank you. I'm not seeing any, are you seeing any more questions? I just wanna make sure I didn't yeah. miss. If anyone has any more questions for Matt, or if you want him to clarify anything, you can continue to type in your questions. I'm not seeing any more. We'll wait a couple of minutes. Do you have anything to add, Matt, while we wait to see if anyone else? I'm trying to think, I guess. Um, I don't know. I was proud of myself for hitting all the marks that I'd like to hit because <laughs> so much information I want to give to you students that, um, that can reassure you about what we're doing at Wagner, clarify the things that we're doing at Wagner. But I guess my big takeaway is that, um, in the things that I'm doing, my office in particular, um, either by virtue of the things that we do, um, subject-wise or topic-wise, we're trying to do things as normally as possible. Um, in the example I gave before of just popping in to ask a question, um, or you know, being accessible via email, phone, videos like this or whatever, um, we'd like your experience to be seamless, whether that's on campus or online. I'm giving you lots of options and I'm a big fan uh, of working with you because I want you to have a say in what you're doing here, um, whatever that experience means to you and to make it mean something to you too. And I'm here and all of us in my office are here to uh, empower you to do those things, to help you, to support you, to give you a kind word um, or, or whatever it is that can help you further along in your journey. I think that that's what you're going to get at Wagner and we're here, you know, I, I don't know what Dana and Skylar would say at the end here, but I would say we're here if you have questions going forward, you know, if you're not a student at Wagner and wanna be a student at Wagner and you wanna reach out to us to, um, from myself, I can say I'm very, very happy to communicate with you that way. It might be. Uh... Yeah. Hi. So I don't see any more coming through right now. Um, okay, Skylar, I think we covered all of them. Yes, I believe we, we actually do have something. We do have a question that just came in. Okay, great. So could you tell me something about the international students? Do you think it will be hard to adapt to the classes? Um. I guess it very much depends. <laughs> it's hard to say um, because of, you know, where it is you're coming from or where the student is coming from, the language um, skill that the student has. If you're being admitted to Wagner, the idea is that you have the skill uh, and the ability and the talent to succeed here. Um, those are the students that we, accept and those are the students that we admit and those are the students that we serve. So if um, if you're at all worried about that, 
that hopefully can be answered through the admissions process because we want you to know that when we want you to come here, we believe that you can succeed, whatever that means. Um, and depending on the classes that you're taking or the major that you want to pursue, there's lots of different pathways for that if you're thinking in the future about um, um, in the future about you know getting a, a work visa or something like that to pursue a, a career in that area different areas are, are, are more um, prone to do that um, and we can work with you on that as we go forward but um, I don't think there's any restriction <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, you know, I, I think that students find difficulties in, in lots of different ways, not just international students. And I think that we're here to kind of help you through all of those kinds of things, whatever that might be. I would say it's not a blanket statement that I could say that, oh, this kind of student is going to find it difficult or this kind of student is going to find it difficult. You may or you may not depend. So I'd like to, if you're very concerned, I'd like to kind of maybe talk with you individually about what might be, might be feeling. Um, and work and work through that too. But I would say on the whole, if you're going to get accepted to Wagner, you're going to do well. Yeah, and we had just to add to that. Uh, last week we had a forum with the honors program with Amy, okay. and she, students were asking about what it is. How do international students adapt? And do a lot of them join the honors program? And she was kind of giving them confidence that there are plenty yeah. of students a part of the honors program that she's experienced. And it, it does give them, especially the honors program, gives them a nice community to be involved with. And there's a lot of a lot of activities that are set up and planned for them, which give them an opportunity to interact with others um, when it comes to you know, making friends, making connections, and all of that type of stuff. So we have a pretty decent international population. Oh, yeah. When I say decent, I mean the number wise of international students on campus for a small college, I would say. Um, and there is a place for them here. And I know that Amy had also mentioned that for international students, as far as like anything language, they actually, a lot of them do become better proficient and more proficient in the English language through the writing classes they take and um, the extra supports that they get which is kind of comforting to know as well. For sure. We also have on campus the uh, Center for Intercultural Understanding, or uh, the Culture for, Center for Intercultural Advancement, uh, CICA, which is very, very supportive in addition to the things that my office does. Um, they are um, welcoming to international students to Wagner, to Wagner students who want to travel internationally and study internationally. They help those students as well. Um, but they're also um, a place that, that can become like a home away from home for international students and students who are traveling because uh, they're very supportive in that office too. So you may have contact with them. Yes. Yeah, the student said she's nominated for the honors program and that's what she meant by the question. Yeah, yeah. I, I would echo Dana and Amy by saying that if you were nominated for the honors program, that, that I'll take the answer from there. Of course, you're going to do well. That's great. <laughs> yes. There's a reason for that. <laughs> okay. Um, any more questions? I know we were coming almost at the hour mark, but we'd be happy to answer any more questions that you may have that we may not have hit upon. Um, give it another second. And you know what, while we're actually waiting to see if anything else comes in, I know last last session I was a part of the students were asking for um, Amy's email. So I'm thinking that they may want yours as well if they want to reach out to you directly since they will be, um, I'm sure you mentioned this, but you are the person that registers them for their first semester of classes. Right? I did not mention that. It's a good point. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't sure. I didn't remember, but that is, <laughs> that is your contact person. He is if that's still happening that way that you will be in contact with every freshman as far as registration goes yeah yeah you'll you'll probably see my name a whole lot in emails and things like that over the summer but yes feel free to reach out to me as well i don't know how yeah, you're going to distribute that or if you're going to do that um i could if you're okay with it i could type it into the question section for everyone to see if you want to just 
I just want to make sure I'm starting okay, I can to type. Sure. Oh, you can type in it? Okay, perfect. Thanks, I don't know. My sync function is not showing. I don't know if that's key, uh, I have capability there. Um. Okay. Hang on one second. Do you want to just say it to me? I'll type it in. Yeah, sure. It's my name is Matthew Kubaki. Uh, you can call me Matt, but M A T T H E W dot K U B as in boy. A C K I at Wagner dot E D. I knew that, Matt. I just wanted to make sure I'm spelling everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds great. That sounds great. Okay. <laughs> so. hmm. It's not letting me send it either. Hopefully, people heard that too. They <laughs> <laughs> um, Skyler, are you able to? Yeah, I'm not sure why. Uh, no. It's M A T T H E W dot K U B A C K I at Wagner dot E D, right? Yep. Okay, so that should have worked. I sent it to all participants. And just to remind, just to remind everyone, this was recorded. So we will be doing recap videos for all students that may have wanted to attend, but they couldn't for some reason today. So, and we'll be sending out, we'll have, there'll be a landing page where students can actually go and look at all the videos that they may have missed on Wednesday. So um, they'll be able to access any of the questions or reach out to Matt directly. That's great. Otherwise, I think we're good. And do you have any closing remarks? Anything more? No, I would just say we're, we're excited for you to join us on here. So what, what can we do to make uh, your decision and make it clear um, about what you're, what you're interested in? We'd be happy to answer all those things. Yes, and I agree with Matt, we are excited. We welcome your questions. We'd love to speak with you. Um, Definitely reach out to your admissions counselors if you have any questions regarding admissions. If you have any other questions regarding academics um, and scheduling, advisement, reach out to Matt. Thank you for joining today. Thank um, you. And hopefully we will speak with you soon. And look back, we like I said, this will this will be recorded, and then next week we'll have additional um, offerings for live forums for you as well. So. Okay, so I think that's good. So thank you so much, Matt, for joining us. Thank you, Skylar. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. And everyone, have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.